I want to recognize and acknowledge the presence of some special people. I, I know Liberia has been represented. I don't know if there are other countries that are here. Any other members of representing another nation celebrating? So Liberia is being represented this morning. And I just want to recognize the presence of Honorable Isaac Yeah, the, the Deputy Chief of Missions. God bless you, sir. <laughs> Amen. Ms. Sophia Tokba, Minister Counselor, God bless you. Josiah Duma, also Minister Counselor, welcome. Ms. Mary Perry Ricks, Counselor, thank you. Ms. Mona Todi Wa, Second Counselor. Kathleen Dima, the research. Cheo and Nadia Kamara, all working with the embassy. If you're here, God bless you. And we'll also have the president of the Liberia, the Liberian Community Association, Ms. Wilma Campbell. Wilma, I, 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 amen. God bless you. Good to have you back with us. Amen. We will be praying for Liberia a little bit later. Uh, but for now, we're going to bring you the word. Last week, we talked... Uh, I begin talking about honor, the importance of honoring uh, God and honoring those who God has instructed us to honor. I want to continue because honor is a big thing with God. If you remember last week, we shared with you the story of Eli and his sons, and they were chosen to be priests and to oversee the things of the temple and represent God to the people. Uh, but Eli's sons, the Bible says of them, they did not know God. And even though they were priests, they didn't know God. How many of you know that you can be in church and don't know God? How many of you know you can be a deacon and an elder and even a pastor and even a bishop and not know God? They're folks who are preaching and teaching and they have a completely different motivation. It's not because they know God. It's not because they reverence God. It's not because they fear God. And you can tell by the life they live. The way they talk, the things they do well, that problem existed in Israel. And Eli's sons, who were supposed to be attending to the things of the temple, showing reverence to God, they disrespected God, dishonored God. And then God spoke to Eli, who was their father, and God said, I'm going to hold you responsible, not just them, because you let it happen. You saw them doing it, you talked, but you didn't exercise the authority I gave you to make the correction and as a result of not honoring God, God said to them, he said, listen, going forward, if any man honors me, I will honor him. But those who dishonor me or despise me, he said, I will hold in little esteem. Now, the, the story is tragic because God said and pronounced a curse upon Eli's family. And God said, because you have dishonored me, none of your family will ever reach old age. And so their lives were shortened because of dishonor. Now we thank God for Jesus and we thank God for grace, but that doesn't mean there are not consequences and blessings associated with honoring people and honoring God. There's a law of honor, right? God said, if you honor me, I will honor you. And so when you read the story of in, in 1 Samuel and you see what happened because they failed to honor God, and yet God said, which was a promise, if you honor me, I will honor you, we ought to recognize that there's a law of honor that is at work. Honor is a big, big deal with God. And if we, if we obey that law of honor and make it a way of life and practice honoring God and honoring people appropriately, we will see that that principle will open doors. Amen? Of favor and blessings both with God and man. On the other hand, if we ignore it and just do what we want to do, say what we want to say, that same principle that can bless us will then work against us and doors of blessings and favor will close. Some of us here 
have missed tremendous opportunities. Doors that would have opened, favor that would have come our way had we learned to practice the principle of showing honor to whom honor is due. Say to your neighbor, show honor to whom honor is due. Go to Romans chapter 13 quickly, please. I want to read 13.7, Romans 13.7. There we, we find these words. Let's read together. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, if revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Amen? Give, render honor to those to whom it is due. Uh, Say to your neighbor, honor is a big deal with God, right? In Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, is where we find one of the Ten Commandments. And one of those commandments tells us to do what? Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be what? Long upon the earth which the Lord your God is giving you. So that shows that one of the benefits of showing honor appropriately to those who God tells us to honor in this particular verse, your parents, mother and father, is the promise of longevity. Now, again, reminding you of last week, the truth is there are some people, some children who are dead today who would have been alive if they had honored their parents when their parents told them, this is how you should behave. Don't do this. Don't go here. This is not good for you. If they had honored their parents and shown respect for what their parents told them and took counsel from their parents because they honored them, some of them will be alive today or not in jail today or not in trouble today or not married to the person they're married to and experiencing hell. Oh, yeah, your parents warned you. They, they warned you, but they didn't, you thought they didn't know what they were talking about. And you just went ahead and did what you did. And, and, and I thank God for my mother. There was a young lady I was kind of liking. Well, she was kind of liking me. <laughs> in college. And my mother, of course, I was in Tulsa. My mother was in Liberia. She just happened. Because I was graduating in that year from, from college. And she came for my graduation. And she met this young lady. And she didn't. She didn't, she, didn't, she didn't say the green light wasn't on. It wasn't a red light, but it was a strong yellow light. <laughs> well, because I honored my mother, I took that yellow light very seriously. And to this day, I thank God because I believe God used that to deliver me. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, I don't know how, 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 how much you realize how important a pastor's wife is. Because the, the, the wife I have is so sweet. She don't cause no problem for you guys. <laughs> you know, she's so sweet. You take her for granted. But mine, if I, had, uh, if, if I had married that other girl, I'm not sure you would be here. <laughs> but God used my mother, right? And because I honored her, I believe God used her to deliver me from trouble. That's part of what he's saying here. Honor your father and mother. So, Because if you listen and to their counsel, one of the reasons God puts people in your life with authority is to protect you. It doesn't mean everything they say will always be right. But pay attention. Listen when someone with authority that God has put in your life is speaking. Because often they're the means that God is using to protect you from harm. All in agreement said amen. amen. That's not just an Old Testament principle. It's true in the New Testament as well. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1 to 3. Paul is writing to the church and he's really referencing the Exodus 20 commandment. He says, children, 
Obey your parents in the Lord. Now, he, ex he extends it a little bit. Now, not just your biological parents, but your parents in the Lord. And so you have your biological parents for the, in the family, but how many of you know in the church, God gives you spiritual parents? Because the church is like a family. And just like the home, you have, you have the parents, and those parents are entrusted with the responsibility to watch over, protect, and provide for the needs of their children, primarily physically. In the church, God puts people in authority, pastors and elders, to, to play that role spiritually. And now God is saying, through Paul, he said, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Then he puts in quote, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, so that it may do what? Go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on earth. That's the NIV, that you may live long on the earth. Again, that promise comes up again in the new covenant. So if I were you, I would claim it. I would say, you know, I choose to believe this. I'm going to mix my faith with this, that as I choose to honor spiritual authority, that, that God's going to bless me amen, with life, with longevity. Claim it. Let's believe it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So here, is, here again, I, I quote these verses or read from them just to emphasize for you the importance of learning to show honor appropriately to God and to the people that God has placed in your life to whom he has said, of whom he has said, honor them. It's for your good. All right? Now, Honor is not, showing honor is not necessarily a very popular thing, especially nowadays, right? Uh, it's more about trying to get you to honor me. Trying to get you to celebrate me. You know, there's a common saying nowadays is don't go where you're tolerated. Go where you're what? Show me the chapter and verse. Because we speak that as though it came straight from heaven. Show me anywhere, I challenge you, show me anywhere in Scripture where God tells you don't go where you're tolerated, just go where you're celebrated. Because you, what does that mean? Go where you are going to be honored. Go where you're going to be praised. Go where the lights will be on you. Go where you will be in the spotlight. If they don't put the spotlight on you, if they don't celebrate you, if they don't talk about how great you are, how good you can sing, how good you can preach, how good you can do, how much. If they're not going to celebrate your given talents, go find a place where they'll celebrate you. You'll be the star. That's, that's, I don't see it in the Bible. When I read the Bible last, Jesus was saying, take up your cross. Remember it's there? Deny yourself. Isn't that what it's there? No, in fact, Romans 12, 10, in the, in the English Standard Version, I like to read it the way it's, it's done or translated there. It says, love one another with, that's Romans 12, 10, with brotherly affection, and then outdo one another in showing honor. The King James says, in honor, giving preference to one another, the English Standard Version says, I'll do one another. In other words, let's compete. But let's not compete to see who can have the number one spot, uh, who can sh shine the brightest, who can get the greatest accolades. Let's not compete to be celebrated. He says, this is what we ought to do. Let's try to outdo one another in showing honor to whom honor is due. Anybody wants to compete with me on that? That's what we should be doing. Not going where we're going to be honored, looking for places where we're going to be celebrated. No, 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 no. God, wherever I am, let me be an instrument to show honor. To honor those, to honor you first, and in honoring you, to honor all those 
that you would have me to honor. So I'm here not to compete for honor. I'm here to be an instrument through whom God can bring honor to others. Are you listening to me? Are you receiving it? Are you accepting correction? Are you changing your mind? Are you changing your attitude? We're not hearers of the word at Bethel, right? We're doers, not just hearers. We hear it, but then we go ahead and do what? We do it because it's not the hearer of the word that is blessed. It's the what? Say to your neighbor, neighbor, this is what the word says. We should. Outdo one another in giving honor. Not in seeking honor for ourselves, but in giving honor. Hallelujah. So we're not going to go about competing. When, please don't ever say that thing again. Go where you are. That is unbiblical. That's the worst advice you can give yourself. Or you can give to somebody else. So you got folks just going from one place to the other to the other because they're looking to be celebrated. Now, let me give you an example, perhaps one of the best examples of someone who really understood the law of honor or the principle of honor and who practiced it and who tremendously reaped the blessings of God because of it is that man called David. Ever heard of David? God chose David from behind the sheep. He was a shepherd and God said, you're going to be king. And when Saul, who was king, discovered that David was looking real good in the eyes of the people and he started to feel threatened by David, Saul made it his business to do everything he could to get rid of David. He chased David for years. David had to hide, run, went through all kinds of things trying to get away from this man who was determined to kill him. You know the story? And then one day, Saul had brought 3,000 men because he heard David was in a certain place looking for David to kill David. And in the process, because even though he was king, he was still human, he needed to use the bathroom. So he went into the cave. Sound like in Africa. So, you, know, you, you find a place, right? And went into the cave to do his business. What he didn't know was that David and his men were in the same cave. And the men said to David, David, God said he was going to give you your enemy. God told you that he would make you king. Surely God has delivered the men into your hands. And so they were telling David, go now and get rid of Saul. And David said, no, 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 no. No, God forbid that I should lay my hands or do anything to this man who is God's anointed. So David understood that even though this man was chasing him, doing everything that you can imagine to get rid of him, when he had the opportunity to really strike back, David understood the principle of honor and said, even though this man has done evil, I'm going to still honor him because of the position that God has put him in. I want to still treat him as king. And so David refused to lay hands or to do harm to Saul. What he did was he went and he cut a piece of Saul's uh, gown, garment. Jess, I guess he wanted Saul to know what he could have done. But the Bible says after he did that, he felt bad. He felt convicted because he had even done that. Can you imagine? I can see you rejoicing. God has delivered my enemies. <laughs> hey, God, you're great. God, you're good. Powerful. Don't mess with the child of God. <laughs> my goodness. 
touch not God's anointed. But notice how David, it was the principle of honor. David understood how important it was to God to honor him and to honor those that God had put. And since God was the one who chose David, I mean, chose Saul, David was determined to keep honoring Saul until God removed him. But he wasn't going to be the one to dishonor Saul because he knew in Dome that I will be dishonoring the God who put him there. If God said God's going to get rid of him, then God would have to do it God's way. But I am not going to dishonor, violate that principle of honor just because it's going to, it's going to work in my interest. That was David honoring God and honoring because he honored God. He honored Saul, who God had made king. The same David, when Saul and Jonathan were eventually, unfortunately, Jonathan got killed because of his connection to his father. Sometimes you got to be careful who you connect with because their trouble can come on you. Some of you are in trouble because who you connected to. Mm -hmm. So Jonathan died because he was related and connected to his father. His father was killed in, in, and he died. And David finally, after years of being chased by this man, treated wrong, being betrayed, all of that, David now had become king. He was on the throne. He was ruling. He was reigning. He was King David. God had put him on that throne. God chose him and God made him king. And at a time when David could have said, listen, I'm a giant killer. Because, you know, he did kill Goliath. And it took a lot to kill Goliath, to go to battle. So he could have, I'm a giant killer. I'm a man of power. Amen. I'm the man of the hour. I'm the tower of the Hebrew people. Honor me. Man, that was a time to seek honor for himself, right? All of his accomplishments, you know, God worked with him, but God didn't work by himself. David had to go to battle and, and all of that stuff. Now that he's king, he could have said, you know what, now it's the time for me to be celebrated, no longer tolerated. I've arrived. All of my enemies are gone. But do you know what David did? One of the first things he felt he needed to do? Instead of trying to get honor for himself, David called his people and said, who of all of King's family, in his, Saul's family, is there anyone still alive that I may show? Oh, this person is, I, I don't know who's back there, but you are amazing. <laughs> yeah, let's honor, give honor to whom honor is due. That, whoever is back there, you are amazing. Amen. All right, there it is. So David asks the question, is there still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of, of God? And Ziba said to the king, there is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. It was Mephibosheth, Jonathan's son, who managed to escape. But in escaping, the woman who was his nurse that was running with him fell. And he got injured and became disabled in both legs. But she was hiding him. So nobody knew really that, that, that there was any family Memory still left from Saul. But when David came to power, he remembered Jonathan. And he said, listen, is there anyone that I can show kindness to in honor of Jonathan? And, and they said, yeah, Mephibosheth is here. And David said, bring him to me. And when, he, when they brought him to David, David said, Mephib Mephibosheth. And the boy, I'm sure, didn't know what David was about to do. He was scared. David said, no, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And David said, you know what? I'm going to give you everything that your family, that's, that Saul and, and, and Saul's family own, I'm going to give it to you. And he instructed the people to manage all of that property on behalf of Mephibosheth. And then he said, for you, I want you to eat at my table Every day. In other words, he took this boy and treated him like family. Why? To honor Jonathan. Yeah. 
Because David know, knew that in honoring Jonathan, in honoring Saul, he was honoring God. And God said, if you honor me, I will honor you. And God honored David with victory after victory after victory. Many battles, many wars, but victory after victory after victory. God honored David, and one of the reasons was David knew how to honor God. What about you? What about me? Let's outdo one another in showing honor. Let's stop chasing after honor for ourselves. God will honor us as he chooses. Don't worry about that. God knows how to honor his people. Let's make it our priority to outdo, compete with. Every day, let's go about honoring God by honoring those that God has told us to honor. So the question, Bishop, is who are we to honor? Are you ready for this? Look at 1 Peter 2.17. 1 Peter 2.17, whom should you honor? Let's read it together. Honor all People, let's stop there. Who are you to honor? He said, "Wait a minute, not just the good people, because all doesn't mean some." Say the neighbor, "All means all. All does not mean some. All does not mean you honor the noble. You honor the important." You honor those who have great achievements. You honor those who have done you good or those who are likely to do you good. You honor those who you think can do something to help you or you only honor those who you see as being ahead of you. You honor all those people. But, you, but if you're going to honor all people, it means you got to honor the ones you don't like too. I'm preaching better than you're listening. Uh, I, let me talk to y'all. You all, I'm not talking to you. Those people are not listening. Let me talk to y'all. Hey, you got to honor those that don't always do you right. You got to honor those you don't agree with. You got to honor those you won't even vote for. I'm not voting for you, but I'm going to honor you. Why? Because God told me to honor all people. And the last time I checked, you're still a person. Are you hear me? You honor, you honor all people. Now, what that means then is, again, we don't have the time to look at all the verses I was going to take you through. But, you know, we're told to honor those in authority, right? And honor the king is there. Now, civil authority, we need to honor those folks who are in positions of authority, regardless of who they are. Uh-huh. Whether you agree with them or not, you don't have to agree with them to honor them. You can honor them and still disagree. You can honor them and not vote for them. But if you're going to honor God, remember David and Saul? That person didn't, didn't chase you all your life trying to kill you and do all of that. You got to honor the king. All people includes the king you like and the king you don't like. Be careful how you talk to and talk about those whom God has put in authority in government. But the Bible also says, Paul writing to Timothy, he says that we should honor our spiritual leaders. So in, in, in government, in, when it comes to civil authority, we should honor those who are in positions of authority. 
when it comes to the church, there are those that God has placed in authority. Pastors and elders are positions of authority in the local church. We honor God by honoring those people. It doesn't mean you agree with everything they say or do, but you understand the authority and the position they're in, and because of that, you honor them. Hmm? In the home, there's an authority structure there. In marriage, the husband is the head. That's still in the Bible. You, I didn't get enough amens. <laughs> you, can, you cannot pick and choose what part of the Bible you're going to agree with. Okay? When the Bible says uh, homosexuality is a sin, you say, yes! When the Bible says, wives, honor your husband because he's the head of the home, you say, no. No, no, no. In marriage, the husband is the head of the home. I, I don't have the time to talk about that, but really, women, God was taking care of his daughters when he gave that responsibility to your husbands. Because being the head of the home means you also lay down your life. <laughs> Jesus was the head of the church. He went to the cross. So you men who think being head of the home means I'm Lord, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Being head of the home means you die first. <laughs> Say hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. When you hear some, some guy trying to break into your house, you don't tell your wife to go look and see. <laughs> you make sure she is secure, and you go, and you get your head blown up for her. <laughs> no, but that's the truth. So men take that and you twist it and you try to use it to lord it over when really it's given to you to serve. But the order is still there. Wives, you're supposed to honor your husbands, not because they're the greatest person, but that's the position they're in. If you didn't want that person to be your head, you should never have married him. <laughs> Yeah, please make that decision before you get married. Make sure, is this someone I'm going to be willing to submit to and honor as my head for the rest of my life? If you say, uh-uh, they may have, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Those decisions he's making, I don't think I ain't going. So don't marry him. But if you marry him, my, again, if you're going to be scriptural and be uh, honor God, you're going to have to honor that office, that position he's in. So in marriage, the husband's the head. In the family, the parents on the head, right? So children are supposed to obey their parents. But what I mean, parents, right after God says that, that the children should obey their parents in Ephesians 6, the next thing he says, now parents, fathers, do not provoke your children. So wait a minute, wait a minute, that means that children who are people, honor all people, Children are people. Parents are supposed to honor. So if you are a parent and you keep provoking your children, provoking your children, provoking your children, you're not honoring them. So there's a way for you to exercise your authority as parents while still honoring your children. You, you want to come back next week so I can continue? I'm going to invite the, 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 the diplomats that are here. Come back next week, please. So we can continue this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, remember, I will take a few more minutes and then I will end because you can't preach it all today. I got five more minutes. So are you getting the message? Are you grabbing it? We are to honor all people. Now, honor all people. You honor people for several reasons. One, you honor people because of the position they're in. There are certain people, the position they're in calls for honor. Whether you agree with them or not, this position of authority requires that I honor this person who's in that position in order to honor God. 
Amen? The position they're in. That's the second reason you honor all people. Because one of the reasons to honor people is for the service they provide. Then this is what God said in the word. Jesus speaking. Jesus said, if anyone honors me, him the Father will honor. He says, whosoever serves me, honors me. Okay? And whosoever honors me, honors the Father. Jesus also said, if you want to be great, the greatest of you must be what? So you see the connection between service or serving and greatness? The Bible says concerning Jesus in Philippians, even though he was God, he humbled himself and became what? A servant. Therefore, God has exalted him. So God honored the son because the son was a servant. You honor people because of their position, but even without the position, you honor people because of the service. That means the person who is mowing your lawn may not have the position, but that person is serving. And anyone who is serving is worthy of honor. Amen. The person who does what we consider menial tasks, from God's point of view, they are worthy of honor because of the work, the service they are providing. So you honor people because of the position they're in. You honor people because of the service that they're providing. Anybody who is serving deserves honor. As far as God is concerned. And, and again, God reserves the greatest honor for those who serve the most. God is not impressed by your title. Men may be impressed by all of those degrees you have on the wall. And all of those certificates of honor you have received. The wall is... God looks at it, he can not say nothing. You can impress men with those certificates, but God is impressed by service. So there's those who are serving with, especially those who don't need a title. They don't have a big title. They don't make a lot of money. Men of them, men of you here are volunteers. You don't get paid one penny for what you do. Where's Pastor Glady? Did she leave? What are you doing outside there? Pastor Kismir, Pastor K I mean, all the ushers, the deacons that I hear, the, the children's workers, the choir, I mean, the praise and worship team, and we could go on, the people in, this, in, the, in the parking lot. None of these people are being paid for the work they're doing. Amen. But this is service. They're serving the Lord and they're serving you. And for that reason, you ought to be honoring them. I ought to be honoring them. We ought to be honoring them because they are serving. Do you hear me? As far as God is concerned, anyone who is serving deserves to be honored. Because in God's eye, the greatest people are those who serve. Yes, another reason you should honor all people is because of, 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 the, of who they represent. I've never met personally the representatives of the embassy that are here today, but you, you, see, what, you see where they're sitting? Why, do you, why are they sitting on the front row? Because of who they represent. Amen. <laughs> They didn't come in their own name this morning. They came in the name of the Embassy of the Republic of Liberia, right? And just because of who they represent, they deserve honor. Amen? In a sense, they bring to us, they represent Liberia. So the image of Liberia, they carry. So the way we treat them is the way we treat Liberia. Why? Because of who they represent, and the image they carry. Listen, one of the reasons why every 
body should be honored while God says honor all people? Because hear me, all people are created in the image of God. Whether, whether they're saved or not, they bear his image. So if she bears the image of God, even if it's flawed, the image of God, she was created in God's image automatically. And then she belongs to God because whether they acknowledge God or not, they belong to him. Jesus Christ paid the price. He purchased every human being with his blood. Every human being, he owns them. Now some of them are rejecting him and unwilling, but he still owns them. And you know he owns them. So because I know you are owned by God and I know you bear the image of God, I'm going to honor you. So let me just, let me just summarize. I just got a zero. That means I'm out of time. So I got to honor. <laughs> but you know what? Let me use that to make a good illustration. Since God tells us to honor all people and we could be specific and list all that are included, what that means is if you are quote unquote under authority, under authority, you are to honor all those who are above you in authority. If you are in authority, you are to honor all those who are under you. So we are to honor up, we're to honor down, we're to honor to the left and to the right. Everywhere we go, we ought to be honoring people. Hallelujah. So Paul says in Romans, this is what Paul says. He says, let's outdo one another. Let's outdo one another. Let's, let's outdo one another in honoring one another. Now I want you to imagine. Imagine your home, husband and wife. Imagine your home. If you as a husband was competing with your wife, to outdo her in honoring her. Imagine if she refuses to let you outdo her and she decides, I'm going to outdo you in honoring you. It, just imagine how your home right now would change. The atmosphere in your house would change. Your relationship would change. You're going to have a new home. You don't need counseling, marriage counseling. Every day, marriage counseling. Ma Listen, just take that one. This is counseling right now. Best counseling you can hear. Just take this word, go to your house, husband and wife, and start to apply it and see if it doesn't change your family and your home. And all of a sudden, instead of trying to find an excuse not to go home, You'll be eager to go home. Children, parents, compete in honoring one another. And little ladies and gentlemen, what a change, what a home you would have. What a, what a home you will create. But let's take that now and do it in the church. Can you imagine the kind of church we would have? If instead of running around here trying to get recognized, praise, celebrate it, if we ran around here finding ways to celebrate and honor others for the reasons I just gave to you, what a church this would be. Imagine a government Imagine a nation where this business of honoring each other was what we were pursuing. My goodness, it'll be heaven on earth. So I think we sang that prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Well, one of the ways that prayer gets answered is when you and I decide we're going to make it our business to 
to honor those to whom honor is due. Lastly, we've talked about honoring people, but all of us know the greatest honor goes to God. Now, yeah. Honoring me doesn't mean you obey me and do everything I tell you to do. But honoring God, that involves obedience. You honor God when you recognize he's God. You honor God when you submit and surrender to his will. You honor God when you place him first. You honor God when you place him first in your schedule. You place him first in the use of your talents and your gifts. You place him first in your treasure. You, you, you give him the first fruit of your increase. You honor God. You honor God when you do his will. When like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, his purpose for you is such that it requires sacrifice and suffering. And in many ways, your flesh revolts around the experience that you're going to have to go through, the, the feelings you're going to have to endure, the pain you may have to face if you did as well. The easier thing, humanly speaking, in your mind is simply do your own thing. And yet you say, oh God, as much as my flesh doesn't want to do this, I know this is your purpose for me. I know this is your call. Not my will, but your will be done. And you surrender to his will. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you honor God. <laughs> Bow your heads, please. Father, we pray that this word, which you have caused us to speak this morning, will take root in each heart and will produce fruit for your glory. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If any man honors me, him the Father will honor. That's what Jesus said. Have you Receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord. I'm not talking about being like the sons of, of Eli, who didn't know God even though they were serving in the temple. Had you received Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord? Have you ever said to him, Lord, I cannot save myself I repent of my sins. I now receive you as my Savior and my Lord, and I do place my life now into your hands. Have you ever done so? If you have not, then the main reason God brought you here today is so that you can have a living encounter with the risen Christ, the Savior of the world, that he might forgive you your sins, that he might save your soul, that he might make you right with God, and that he might come to live his life in you and through you, that he might give you eternal life. Every head is bowed. If you say, Bishop, I am not sure right now if I were to die today, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm not sure. I have some doubts about my relationship with Christ. Am I saved or not? If I were to die today, will I go to heaven? But if you're not sure, please, there's no reason for you to leave here uncertain. We can help you if you let us. I'm going to ask you to do something. We're, we're, we're asking people to have their heads bowed because we're trying to make it as easy for you as possible. But really, we ought not to be ashamed of Jesus in any way. But if you say, Bishop, I would like prayer afterwards for this. I would like prayer. I want to... I want to make sure my relationship with Christ is what it needs to be. I want to make sure I'm saved. If that's you, just raise your hand. I just want to see your hands raised up. We're not going to call you up right now. We just keep your hand up. I just want to see. And if you're watching online, you can acknowledge this too. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm not sure my salvation. I have not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Okay, we're going to do this. The person, you raise your hand right after the service, would you come? 
If you're here, you say, Bishop, I don't have a church home. And I know that part of being obedient to the Lord is being rooted and grounded in a local church. And this is my local church. Oh, I desire for this to be my local church. And I want that to be made known. Would you please raise your hand? And you're saying, I haven't yet made this church my local church home, but I, I'm ready to do so. Okay, I see your hand. Somebody else, I'm ready to do so. Okay. You need to have a local church. That's scripture, and you need to have a local pastor. If you don't have a local church and you don't have a local pastor, and you, can, you believe that this one is the one for you, after this service, I'm going to remain up here for a few minutes. Please come, let me pray with you. Anyone else, come and let me pray with you. In Jesus' name. And those who are watching online, right where you are, simply ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior and your Lord. And then we have information. If you will contact us, we will follow up on you and give you some help. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you glad you came? Yes. 20 of you are glad you came. After all of this, is that how you honor me? Yes. Now that's better. Amen. But thank you so much. And really, I'm serious. All of us, including me, let's do more. Let's do better at celebrating and honoring other people. And make it less about ourselves. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God.